NFL news and rumors presented by Manscaped. I want to give a major shout out to today's sponsor. They're the ones turning on these lights and maybe turning on your girl too. Go to manscaped.com slash chat where you can save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. The Cleveland Browns, they made a little splash today, and that's where we're going to start this show off. Jadeveon Clowney, he agreed to a one-year deal worth up to $10 million. Anytime you talk about Clowney, you're always going to bring up, okay, the former first overall pick back in 2014. But we have done this exact same song and dance with Clowney for basically the last three years. Was he no doubt talented? Absolutely. Does he have injury concerns? Yes, he absolutely does. But now... Clowney has an opportunity to really showcase his physical ability because realistically, he's not the best defender on that defense. And maybe for the past two seasons, he hasn't been the best defender on a defense, but now he's definitely not the best defender. Now you pair him up with Miles Garrett. Now, technically, this deal is not official yet. He still has to pass his physical first. And I will say this, when it comes to Clowney, that actually might not be 100% of a slam dunk considering the fact that he has battled so many injuries throughout his career. But Cleveland has had their eyes on him for a long time, probably the last three years, at least in free agency. Now they go out and they get their guy. So the question that I'm going to hit you guys with here is this. After the Clowney signing, are the Cleveland Browns the best team in the AFC North? I definitely think it's something that we're going to talk about. But the question is, who is the best team in the North? If you think it's the Baltimore Ravens, I want you to type B A. L. If you think it's the Bengals, I want you to type CIM. If you think it's the Browns, type CLE. If you think it's the Pittsburgh Steelers, I want you to go ahead and type PIT. So Clowney, he actually did pass his physical with Cleveland, so it's a done deal here. But what exactly are you going to get out of the former first overall pick? Because 2020, man, <laughs> the Tennessee Titans like, wait a minute, we didn't get what we were paying for. So hopefully the Browns, at least they're hoping, that they get what they're paying for. And I think that's why you see this contract is worth up to $10 million. But coming off a year, probably the worst year of his career, 19 tackles, zero sacks, four tackles for a loss. But in 2019 and 13 games with the Seattle Seahawks, he had 31 tackles, seven tackles for a loss, three sacks, four forced fumbles. I will say this about his 2019 campaign. He actually was a very good run stopper. Sure, if you're paying somebody north of $10 million a year, especially as an edge rusher, you want to have a little bit more sacks, but he is also a very good run stopper. But throughout his career in 83 games, he's got 255 tackles, 75 tackles for loss, 32 sacks, and nine forced fumbles. He is now going to be able to pair up with Miles Garrett, and for a Browns team, they don't have many holes, which is kind of a crazy thing to talk about. And they might actually be the most complete team in that division, which is, I might even argue, one of the best, if not the best division in the National Football League. But Miles Garrett to Devion Clowney, two of the best, um, we'll say, overall defenders, at least on the edge in, in football. And they also went out and got Tack McKinley. This Browns team, I'll tell you what. They're getting pretty interesting here. So grade the Browns signing of Jadeveon Clowney. I want you to go down in the comments and let me know. A, B, C, D, or F. For those of you that are new to the show, our grading scale is simple. Hopefully you all went to school, right? A is great. B is good. C is average. D is bad. F is failing. I will say that he's still getting $10 million coming off a season where he had no sacks and 19 tackles. It's more of just like a... Okay, he had like one great play in college where he about killed somebody from South Carolina, and he's got all these, all these things. Like, he is a phenomenal athlete, but are we ever going to see this great Clowney? That still remains to be seen. So Clowney, C, that's my grade here. He's a good player. It's going to be a good fit. If he can stay 100% healthy and you get a very motivated Jadeveon, which you might actually get because let's be real, if he goes out and balls out like straight up, you know, Manscaped style, he can then go out and potentially have a very good deal, especially next offseason. NFL news and rumors coming at you again. More here around Aaron Donald. And is this guy in some trouble? Now, there's no doubt that he is one of the most dominant players in football. And when it comes to potentially getting into a fight, probably the last guy I would pick. Now, the story around here is this. Pittsburgh man claims that Donald assaulted him. Apparently, the attack happened early on April 11th, somewhere between the hours of 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. The victim's attorney has come out and said that his client suffered a concussion 
and other injuries. I am going to tell everyone watching right now, if you have an uneasy stomach or if you're a parent and you're with your child and maybe they're under the age of 18 and you don't want to see them have a picture with the guy with the black eye, tell them to look away. But if you do want to see the picture of the victim, here is the picture. As you can see, there is a big time black guy on the right side. Until this, we get more about what actually happened here, you can't say that he's guilty. You can't say that he's not guilty. We will try to keep you guys updated on all things going on around the NFL. If when we do get an update, though, around Donald, like I'm telling you, we'll be able to break it down for you all here. So if you're always looking for the latest NFL news, rumors, and more, go ahead and subscribe to Chat Sports. Click that big red button that says subscribe. And if you are already a loyal watcher, Take the link below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. If you could send it to some friends, send it to some family members, because it's pretty simple here. Like, the more subs we get, the more shows that we're able to do. So please, go ahead and subscribe. All right, one of the biggest debates going on right now in the National Football League is this. Who will the 49ers take at number three? And there's no doubt that it's a pretty interesting debate, but I really think that it comes down to just three players. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to say Trevor Lawrence goes number one. I know, we're getting wild here, right? Really, really, really crazy. At pick number two, I think the New York Jets go with Zach Wilson. So now the question is this. Who are the 49ers going to take at pick number three? Because it's between Trey Lance, it's between Justin Fields, and it's between Mac Jones. So out of the three quarterbacks that you see on screen right now, who do you think is the best fit? For the San Francisco 49ers, who do you think is the best fit for that Kyle Shanahan offense and everything that they're going to try to do? If you think it's the quarterback product out of North Dakota State, I want you to type TL. If you think it's the guy from Ohio State, type JF for Justin Fields. Or if you're going to go with the Alabama QB, I want you to type MJ for Mac Jones. So let's, now, let's look at their last full season stats, and this should be like kind of an asterisk. So Trey Lance, those are his numbers in 2019. Justin Fields, his numbers that you see on screen are from this past season, but it is in only eight games due to a COVID year. And then Mac Jones. Bottom line is this. Trey Lance put up silly numbers back in 2019. Justin Fields, if you want to look at his 2019 numbers, it's like 41 touchdowns, three interceptions. Phenomenal. Mac Jones didn't obviously play in 2019, but... Had a Heisman-worthy type of season in 2020. So what are they going to do? But if anybody out there is sitting there like, well, Mitch, how do you know they're going to go ahead and trade for, or they're going to draft a quarterback? It's because of this trade here. You don't give up this type of draft capital unless you know that you're going to take a quarterback. What's interesting about this is, though, like if I'm a general manager, if I'm John Lynch, the only way I'm giving up this many picks is if I know the quarterback that I want is going to fall there. Yet... There's still so many rumors circulating about who San Francisco could potentially pick. So before we get into somewhere these like NFL draft experts have these quarterbacks ranked, I do want you to get your votes in here. Grade this trade for the 49ers from a scale from 0 to 100. If you think it's an absolute terrible trade, and remember this one already happened, it's not something that we're cooking up, this trade already happened. Scale from 0 to 100. So 0 being terrible, 100 being that it was a great deal. I see a lot of people typing 69. I can't go with 69. I actually thought this was a really bad trade for the 49ers. It's something that I probably wouldn't have done. I think it's a fail. Um, I don't care really who they get. Now, maybe, sure, if they get their franchise quarterback, but that still remains to be seen. Now, today's show is presented by Manscaped. You see that down there? It says, We Save Balls. They do 100% save balls. And if you want to save your balls, go to manscaped.com slash chat. 20% off and get free shipping. My favorite product that they have is the Lawnmower 3.0, which you guys can see over here as I do my best Vanna White impression. Now, I don't have any chance in hell with Vanna White, but I'll tell you what, my chances definitely go up if I use the Lawnmower 3.0. The other thing that I absolutely love about this product, the eight hour battery life, the changeable blades, because it's very important to change your blades. I'm telling you that right now. Now, if you go out and you get the perfect package, because let's be real, you're trying to look good. You're trying to do your thing. Summer's coming around here, and don't be that guy that's wearing that bathing suit, and you got your whole George W. hanging out. You don't want to be that guy. Now, you can also get the most comfortable boxers and the traveling case as well, 100% free when you get started. Now, for some reason, maybe you're not paying attention, or maybe this entire time I'm reading this, you're down looking at your junk. So one more time, it's manscaped.com slash chat, 20% off and free shipping. This is the best male grooming tool that you'll ever purchase. I 100% guarantee that. It's also in the comments. It's in the description. 
So now, don't wait. Act now. All right, let's now get into Mel Kuyper Jr.'s rankings here of these top three quarterbacks. You got Justin Fields, Mac Jones, and Trey Lance. So if Mel Kuyper was the one drafting number three for the 49ers, he straight up said that, hey, I would go with Justin Fields. But wait a second. Let's go now to Todd McShay. Todd McShay has it ranked as Trey Lance, Justin Fields, and then Mac Jones. Okay, fair enough, both of those guys. Now, my main guy, that sounds kind of weird, is Tom Downey, and he has it ranked as Justin Fields. Trey Lance, and then Mac Jones. Okay, so you just saw three different NFL draft analysts, right, and how they would basically rank it. Yet, when I really think about who is the most likely to go to the 49ers, I might sit here and actually say it's Mac Jones. Now, if you remember a few weeks ago, Adam Schefter said, I'd be shocked if it wasn't Jones. Okay, now today, an ex-NFL GM said, I think it would be one of the most arrogant picks in NFL history if the 49ers decide to go with Mac Jones at number three. So the real question is this, who the heck are they going to take? Because as I go back to this, if you're trading up and giving up all that draft capital, you better in hell know who you're going to take. And I agree with this ex-NFL GM. I do think it'd be one of the worst picks in NFL history because let's face it, you're basically hoping Mac Jones turns out to be exactly what Jimmy Garoppolo is. Oh, wait, you already have Jimmy G. So then it goes to this question. Who is going to be the one drafting Justin Fields? He's got his pro day right now. There's a second pro day, actually, and he looks really good. So reportedly, six teams are there attending his workout. One of the coaches, in fact, is Kyle Shanahan. And I'm looking down at my notes here and my uh, chat sports colleagues. They just sent me a really cool picture of Kyle Shanahan kind of shooting the shit with Justin Fields. So a lot of NFL coaches, they're running the workout, no doubt about that. So who are some of the teams here that are attending Fields' pro day? You got the San Francisco 49ers, the New York Jets. Jets are picking two, 49ers are at three. The Falcons, the Carolina Panthers, the Denver Broncos, the New England Patriots, and look at that, we even got an extra team in there, the Detroit Lions. So teams attending Fields' pro day, it's pretty interesting when you see it. So that basically, to me, says that he's not getting out of the top 15, and I agree. I'd actually be pretty shocked if he got out of the top 10. So get your votes in here. Where is Justin Fields going to be playing? Who's going to be the team that marches up to the podium, hands that card to Roger Goodell, and says, Roger, this is the guy we want. So let me know down in the comments section which team is going to go out and draft Justin Fields.